And it is my pleasure and my honor to be here. And it's very appropriate um, that we're speaking here in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, about the topic of greenways and bicycles. Um, Pierre Lamont, in 1865, traveled to Connecticut, and he brought with him a very crude bicycle. That same year, he had the first US patent for that simple machine right there. And that was actually the machine that in 1978 got me from New London, Connecticut to Tillamook, Oregon. 3,500 miles in 35 days. But the most amazing thing about that trip, and it's a great way to see America, by the way, at about 12, 15 miles an hour, and you get to talk to people and see the communities and hear the different accents around the country. Um, the most amazing thing about that trip is over those 35 days, I probably had a couple million cars and trucks that passed me, and not one of them hit me. <laughs> so, however, 10 years later, when my mother of my three children was pregnant with our third child, and she was about seven months pregnant, I was doing a training ride around Lake Winnipesaukee up in New Hampshire. Um, and boom, crash. That was not the exact car. Actually, the car that hit me was in worse shape than that car. And my bicycle ended up underneath that car. Um, and the third child, which was being born or in the oven, is, is right here in the front row. Her name is Ashley. And uh, it was interesting. From that accident, I wondered, and I I actually walked away with that, from that accident with just road rash. And quite often, I wondered, why me? Why was I spared? Why did I walk away from this accident? Ten years later, my wife and I had heard about this Greenway project in Cheshire, Connecticut. They just completed a Greenway. What's a greenway? We loaded our kids in the minivan with their bicycles, and we went down to Cheshire, and we were riding our bicycles with our kids um, for a couple hours. No cars, no trucks. And back to that question 10 years earlier, I said, wow, this is amazing. I get to ride. We get to ride with our family, our kids, and we get to go from community to community. It only went to com two communities back then. Um, with our kids, without worrying about cars and trucks. And, and really, the Greenways is something that has really come about in our lifetime. And what is a Greenway? Well, a Greenway can be generally defined as an open space or natural areas that have a linear form. Greenways are created for recreation and transportation -ish activities. Walking, running, biking, skating, wheelchair use. The East Coast Greenway is ADA compliant. Strolling, women with strollers. And I am an equestrian by marriage. My wife is a horse person, so we always have to put the horse thing in there. Um, no, but that's part of our logo. And greenways are safe alternative to streets because they are separate from automobiles. Cars are good things. Bicycles are good things not necessarily on the same piece of pavement, as I found out in 1988. Greenways are also referred to as rails to trails and multi-purpose paths. What is the East Coast Greenway? It is a greenway, a pathway, a multi-purpose path that's going to connect 15 states and Washington, D.C. It's going to be 2,900 miles. Over 45 million people live along our route. Right now, we're having about 10 million visits per year. Last year, a record 42 new trail segments were added to the East Coast Greenway. We're quite often referred to as the urban sister of the Appalachian Trail. The project started in 1991 
The first time I heard about the project about seven years ago, it was 14% complete. Right now, we're, all, we're touching on 30%, 29% complete right now. Now, this is a, a picture, obviously, from a popular mechanics. And we're here about changing and transforming cities, the cities of the future. That is not a picture from the popular mechanics magazine from the 1980s. That is Boston, Massachusetts, last year, the week before the newest section of the East Coast Greenway was completed. We got a special little tour to see the newest section. And that is transformative in terms of what this project is going to do for 25 major cities from Canada to Key West. Let's go back in time. How many people here remember the first time they rode a bicycle? Yes, it is. Uh, it, I'm not talking about the train. The process might have been hard, and you might not remember the training. But the first time they took the training wheels off, it was, yes. And, and that woman there uh, is, is not a little girl. She's actually taking the time out to come and be part of this exciting conversation about our share. <laughs> She's actually the leader of BFC Simsbury, Connecticut. Bicycle Friendly Community Simsbury, Connecticut. That is Mary Glassman. And she was the first mayor or first selectman that uh, decided to go for a bicycle friendly community status. And Simsbury got it four years ago and is the first community in southern Connecticut to get uh, bicycle friendly community status. So as long as we have that feeling of riding our bicycles, let's take a trip. As I said, the East Coast Greenway goes from Canada to Key West, and it goes along, and along the spine route. And follow me, come with me as we go on this little trip. And here we start in Canada. And actually, four years ago, we are on the process of riding one week a year, the week a year tour. And uh, Dave Reed uh, is this gentleman right here. He's the chairman of the board, Eric Weiss is right here. He's our map biographer. He's the one that's planning the route. Uh, and this right here, Jane, uh, she is TCT. The Trans-Canadian Trail Project is actually five times larger than the East Coast Greenway. So we met in Canada and we continue down and we started in Calais, Maine. Don't call it Calais, they will correct you, but Calais, Maine. And there's Dan McCready. And they always say that dog pictures are always good in, for presentations. And, and Dan goes up and down the trail all the time with his dog, Sadie. And in Maine, well, there's a lot of this. This is Down East Sunrise Trail, uh, 86 miles uh, in Maine. And then we get to Bangor, to Portland. And along Portland, along a cityscape in Portland, there's the, the wastewater treatment plant, and actually the graffiti artists are encouraged to do their art along the walls of the wastewater plant. This is actually a bike path that goes over I-95. That's our first bridge over I-95. And then we get to Portsmouth, to Boston. And as you can see, this goes along the Charles River. It's absolutely beautiful. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to go around our cities and from city to city to commute or go to school uh, on a separate path that's safe. Worcester, Mass, Providence, Rhode Island. As I said, many of these trails are rails to trails. This was obviously a rail to trail um, and a beautiful train bridge. Here we are, Hartford, Connecticut, Founders Bridge. We have some work to do here in the Hartford area because right now the Founders Bridge does not connect with much, but it will. So um, this is part of the iQuilt project. As you know, uh, many of you know, the iQuilt project will connect the river to Bushnell Park very soon. Uh, we continue down the path to Yale University, and many of the students and faculty actually use the East Coast Greenway to commute back and forth to the university. That's the School of Engineering. Uh, New York City, the East Coast Greenway, goes along the west side, uh, and New York City has become a bicycle-friendly community. Can you imagine that? 
talk about transformation. Newark, New Jersey. And it, you can see the logo, and, and many of you have seen around here probably these signs. The state of Connecticut is doing all these signs along the 200 miles of the East Coast Greenway. Trenton, Philadelphia, Wilmington, Baltimore, Annapolis, got some winter scenes, Washington, D.C., National Harbor, just south of Washington, the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. That's actually a park over I-95. And we go down, Richmond, Virginia, you can see this is a suspension greenway down over the James River in Rich. Oh, we love our ribbon cuttings. Charleston, Savannah, Jacksonville, Miami, you can see these, the greenway goes right along the intercoastal river down there. And here we arrive in Key West. And as the sun is setting on Key West in my presentation right now, I want to say that there is one thing. Did you see what happened this week? Did you all observe what happened? This week, June 19th, the American Medical Association decided Tuesday to recognize obesity as a disease requiring a range of medical interventions to advance obesity treatment. One third of Americans are now technically overweight or obese. We need, we need to burn more calories and less carbon. So the city of, a, of the future will involve more cycling, walking, getting out. It's good for our health. Um, and again, I want to say thank you to everyone for having me here today. The ECG, I talked about the ECG, but what's the ECG A? The A stands for alliance. And for everyone in this room and everyone watching, you can be part of the alliance. I encourage you to go to our website uh, and get involved in your communities. The alliance is you. In the future, Transportation solutions for our cities need to burn more calories and less carbon. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with, you don't quit riding a bicycle because you get old. You get old, old because you have quit riding your bicycle. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.